The Hardy Boys are said to be frustrated in AEW. We've got an update on a huge name leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling. And is WWE bringing back an Attitude Era legend? Stay tuned for all the wrestling news. Tom, do you like the Hardy Boys in AEW? I like the Hardy Boys. You like the Hardy Boys. That's the key line there, isn't it? That you like the Hardy Boys. Maybe not in AEW right now. I like now. the Hardy Boys. You like the Hardy Boys. Do, do, do. It <laughs> seems that the Hardy Boys are not liking it in AEW just now themselves because no. they've said that they're unhappy or at least alluded to that on the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy podcast. Tell me a little bit about it. So Matt was asked if he was frustrated with creative in AEW and he replied, frustration with the direction, I would say, more than anything else. We just want to have a direction and a story and be able to go down that path. There have been a couple of things we've talked about doing in the last few months and stuff has changed that would be a frustration with creative obviously things change people get hurt it is what it is but that would be the main frustration there is enough equity in us to invest a very solid direction and stick with it that's what i'd like to see happen and that's what we're going to be pushing for and i would like to see that happen i think the the, the biggest indictment comes from what jeff hardy says yes though. he continued by saying when i first came back to aew i was pretty exciting uh, i i didn't know what was going to ha be happening in the near future in wwe i felt like i was a ghost just walking around backstage honestly man i kind of feel like that in aew just because of not being involved in something cool i feel like there's something so special that we have within us to really bring out it's a shame that right now where they are they maybe haven't been they haven't been utilized to their fullest and the potential that they have as the hardy boys however AEW is very full of young talent that are wanting to come up from other divisions that maybe need those places that Hardy Boys don't. I think your sentence could have been concluded that AEW is very full. Very full. It's got a lot of people and, and it feels like maybe that the Hardy Boys don't need to be in the spot that they envision themselves to be in personally don't know what, what you think on that one but matt said that despite the years on the clock they still uh, you know have something to offer saying we're not going to be the hardies of the 2000s we're still very solid in-ring performers there's no doubt about that and we have a huge fan base that supports us wherever we go and we go out there and we know how to do things the right way to help elevate our other people we still have to stay in a position of importance to a degree but that's what's important we're looking to get into that groove of maintaining a position of importance so that whatever we do uh, what, whatever we we do want to elevate someone it really means something and i just feel like i don't know whether we've missed uh, like a few boats in terms of those sort of dream matches we could have had like and, and still could have like yeah. putting hardy's in the mix there i know obviously they're doing stuff with brother zay because they had a nice combo with private party but that doesn't really seem to be doing anything yeah it feels, it feels kind of like treading water a little bit for the hardy boys and it seems like i i often genuinely do forget sometimes that jeff hardy is is in aew and it sucks because it's Jeff Hardy, one of my childhood favorite wrestlers. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time, but right now he's he's just sort of treading water a little bit. Um, so I, can, I do sympathize with them, but also when they did have that big spotlight on pay-per-view against uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy and against the Young Bucks, unfortunately, issues in J Jeff Hardy's personal life cost him that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe a case of trust in AEW. Quite possibly. I know in terms of, obviously there's trust there, but the one thing that, you know, that we've mentioned is that the sheer amount of people on the roster and wanting to make sure that everybody gets a shine. Yeah. Uh, Kip Sabian was on Desert Island Graps yesterday. Uh, we had a lovely chat for an hour and a half, talked about all sorts of things, but we do, uh, do talk about the fact that the roster is so loaded with so many mm -hmm. talented people and if you're, you know, you have to be able to adopt and adapt to be able to fit whatever is needed. Yeah. And uh, and I think that is obviously something that, that Kip has been incredibly good at uh, and maybe something that the Hardys feel like they can be doing more of mm. quite possibly. Uh, Kip Sabian, Desert Island Graps on the podcast feed, Check by the way. The it's feed. a wonderful time. Um, I'm but, excited about what we've got next, though, here, Tom. Yes. Uh, I love a good free agent, right? <laughs> free agency is exciting in wrestling, and I've mentioned it before, and I think it's because when I was younger, there was no alternative bar TNA, and you didn't have talent jumping back and forth between stuff, but the big free agent that could be on 
anywhere is Okada. Kazuchika Okada's New Japan contract uh, expires next year, and Sports Illustrated are reporting that he is seriously entertaining the idea of signing with another promotion next year. Uh, obviously, it says the two at the top of the list are AEW and WWE. With AEW, they're already running a storyline with Brian Danielson and Okada, with Danielson blaming Okada for his recent uh, solid snake get up with a <laughs> with a, the, the I think it's a bit of a coming of age yeah, for him. I like it. Looks really cool. I think. Um, which, according to Justin Barrasso, uh, is designed to so that Okada could get a little better sense of AEW and see what he test the waters. It's a way of acclimatizing him before he starts. So if he want, a bit like kind of what they did with Will Ospreay. Yes. So Ospreay got that got that screen time on AEW. So when it came time to make that decision, like. Not only you know, not only did the AEW audience already know who he was, but also the contract that he assigned allows him to still dip yes. into New Japan. So that may be a similar offer that comes from, with Okada. It could be, but WWE is also in the mix, saying the you know WWE have had recent talks about bringing Okada in. There's been discussion about it at least internally. Okada is a big big deal, and I think in WWE it'd be interesting to see how he gets used. Obviously, if on the surface. I think he leans AEW, so he can still do that. Those those New Japan dates if he wants to. We know that a priority for him is staying in Japan. He's got a young child. His wife works there. You would expect something like that. What what do you where do you where would you well, like to see Okada? Well, first of all, like I think the big bit and takeaway from this morning is the fact that Okada is, to quote Sports Illustrated, seriously entertaining yeah. a move. He is a young guy that's made a lot of money and has a very, very settled life in Japan. He could easily work for New Japan Pro Wrestling and make some good money uh -huh. for another 30, 40 years. Yeah. Easily. Like, he's only a young one. Uh, and so the idea that he is maybe in a position where he might just want to, you know, mix things up a bit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, take a chance on something brand spanking new, uh, jump into the abyss as it were I think AEW probably seems the most likely place that he would land the only variable would be uh kind of what they're doing on Raw at the moment with Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes. There was something that we talked about uh might not have been you and I uh but a mm. week or so ago where like the stuff that they were doing with Shinsuke Nakamura was almost being done as just a kind of go see. A little tease, a little, yeah. come here, come here. You know, we look what we can do with, with Japanese performers and how we can, you know, accentuate yeah. their accentuate the positives uh, and do great work with them. You know, try to move away from some of the, the, the missteps of the past. Yes, yes. And prove that they can be, that, that they can present Japanese performers in a certain way. And a lot of people think that the stuff they're doing with Shinsuke Nakamura is a direct message to Okada. To the point where people thought that the guy that Nakamura bring was talking about was going to be Okada. Right. And it feels like, I think, the next few months will be key. Obviously, he's signed with New Japan until the end of January. Next few months are key in terms of how WWE really goes aggressive on this. We know that they also had interest in Will Ospreay. They missed out on Ospreay. They missed out on Jay White. All talents coming from New Japan to AEW. I imagine they'll pr go pretty hard on Okada, especially mm -hmm. considering how big of a name he is. He's a megastar in Japan, especially... And if WWE want to expand that way, maybe for a future premium live event, what better name to have on your, uh, oh, your gosh, roster yeah. than, than Okada? 100%. Um, talking about live events, though, WWE Madison Square Garden's main event has been revealed. Tell me a little about the show on December 26th. So, Tom. Boxing Day, as we call it over here, has always been a, a historic <laughs> day for WWE to put on these shows at MSG. Yes. Uh, they've already announced the double main event, so no main event. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus Dominic yeah. Mysterio in a street fight. And Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the world title. Um, Becky Lynch, Judgment Day, Gunter and the New Day also been announced. No Punk announced for that one. I think Punk is going to be a special attraction. Yeah, at least keep his uh, keep his uh, in ring return mm -hmm. until the new year. Maybe have him appear on some. If they, oh, they don't even need to have him on live events. Yeah, keep him special attraction. Really, isn't he? Yeah, it, that'll it, be it's it. too, He's too much of a star right now to have him on a random Boxing Day event. Um, this next story to round things off, though. Oh. Man. Bringing back a, an actually a legend, Tom. I'm going to let you oh, man, handle I'm this so one excited. because you seem quite excited about this one. So excited! What has WWE have, Shop been releasing? I have waited decades, yeah. and I have, and I even when I interviewed, we chatted for about two hours. Oh, did did this guy and I uh, in in a pod, in a podcast interview you can still listen to, and we didn't know why it's been so long, but it's we are now but clenchingly close to the WWE return of Ken Flippin' <gasps> Shamrock. So WWE Shop have put for sale right now these bad boys, hoodies and t-shirts, sporting the face and the upper body of ha, Ken Shamrock. Now, 
all right, it's just a T-shirt. It's a T-shirt, yeah. Calm down, Tom, you dickhead. But what this Took suggests... Took the words right out my mouth. Must have been while you were kissing me. <laughs> but this is part of a bigger deal. So this, this is happening. Normally this happens because of a WWE licensing Ooh, yes. deal akin to a Legends deal. Yes. Which is where WWE, for a fee, takes the likeness of former stars. Uh, we, we know that the Dudley Boys Dudley have Boys, one. Jane Roberts had one Jane for quite Roberts a while. Had for a while. Hillbilly Jim had one for a while. Yeah. Uh, quite a few others have had them so they can kind of put them on t-shirts and in video games and stuff like that. Historically, this has also led to returns. The Ultimate Warrior signed a Legends it, deal it, to appear did. in the 2K game. Yeah. And then we saw him get in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Same with Goldberg. Sting. Same with Sting. Same with Sting. It's a testing of the waters. So I am... Uh, Shamrock for Hall of Fame! Shamrock for Hall of Fame. I mean, I'd be a very, very exciting prospect to bring in. He, he's had recent runs in TNA. He's in a Hall of Fame in TNA. It was... So, he, yeah, so he, did, he left in 99. Yeah. He did a bit of UFC. He did a bit of random yeah. MMA. Uh, obviously former NWA champion in TNA, uh, and then returned to Impact, looking like he just spent 12 years on the streets fighting. He looked, he looked like Randy Orton at Survivor Series. He just looked like, just, he, like he just walked off the street after stopping a bank robbery, like as, yeah. a, as a grizzled older fighter. He looked brilliant. And I was so excited, so I thought this is going to lead to other things, but then he kind of disappeared again. I know mm. he's got a lot of projects going on for himself at the moment, but let's get this guy in the Hall of Fame. Well, Come on. keep an eye on Ken Shamrock possibly coming back to WWE. Are you going to buy one of the t-shirts? I'm buying 10 of the t-shirts. Buying 10 of the t-shirts. Well, we've got one more thing to plug, Tom. And it's the big documentary. It is doc Sember. I can't believe it. It's big, big month for documentaries here on Cultaholic Wrestling. And we've got the WWE's Golden Age Part 1. That is on the channel already. That went out on Sunday. Go and give it a watch. We've got more parts coming up. I'm very, very excited. And if you enjoy all the content we've been making, specifically the documentaries and, and how much work has gone into that, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. We might be back later on with more wrestling news because, Tom, the wrestling news just doesn't stop right now there is so much of it and we love the wrestling, wrestling news. news must prevail absolutely and pierce always sees it through see you later